I'm your host, Matt Gleason. We're ready for an hour of blitzing the best and brightest, and today, the most beautiful of the contemporary art scene in and around Southern California. Next to me in the Skechers seat is intern Eliza. Hi. Let's talk about intern, <laughs> let's talk about intern Eliza. How's that internship going? It's all right. Yeah? I had money thrown at me today. You had money thrown at you today? Yeah. Are you interning at a strip club before you, uh, before you come to Modern Art Blitz? No, you threw a check at me from, from the second floor of the gallery. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, it's a, and, and it's available to watch on your Snapchat, right? Yes. Yes. So if you're over 40, ask a kid what a Snapchat is. I have no idea. But don't ask them to set it up for you, please. Oh, my God. Don't <laughs> let anybody set up your Snapchat account. No. Did you set up your own Snapchat account? I helped you set up yours. <laughs> And, and that's why painful. every time I post on Snapchat, I get five people. <laughs> how come, how come that, I don't get the 45 people that like, who watch yours Snapchats? Well, because the people that you know don't know what Snapchat is. Are you so saying like, that my friends are all old people? Yes. Okay, so my <laughs> friends are all old people. I notice this when I go to art openings. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of old people. You want to talk about the art, but they want to talk about their recent hospital stay, you know? Yeah, and all, you know, all their, like, ailments. Oh, God, ailments. Number one topic in the art world, over 30, well, over 40, would you say? Yeah. Is about, oh, once you hit 40, oh. you just start talking about the sore pain you mm -hmm. got. Everything yeah. that hurts, your gout. Oh, God, the gout's the worst. Yeah. All your doctor visits. Oh, God, doctor visits. Your blood pressure. Oh, man. All the pills you take now. A lot, lot of pills, a lot of pills. And this, this is not just me, this is everybody oh, over... Yeah. 40, yeah, and you're That's the exciting conversations that I listen to at dinner. But, but what about now, you're in the young art world too. <laughs> what do all those great, exciting, inspirational artists that you go to undergrad with, what do they oh, talk about? They talk more about um, being terrified of being broke. That's, 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 that's everybody. <laughs> or... I'm well, just used to it now, I well, guess. Well, I mean, when we're actually in school, it's like, oh God, what, like a constant existential crisis, and then when we're not in school, it's just a party, pretty much. It's just a party? Yeah. Life party. is just a party. So you don't think about your existential crisis or the one you're going to have when you go back to school. And then think about the one you're going to have when you start going to the doctor regularly. Right. When, for when you turn 40. Whoo-wee. Yeah, and that was a long time ago already for some of us. Um, our guest today is the manager and chief curator of the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster, California. Ladies and gentlemen, the inimitable Andy Campagnon. Yay! <laughs> Yay! There. What okay. does that mean? What is what? Inimitable. Inimitable, In unable to imitate. Oh, okay, I like that. It would be unable to imitate you. All right. Although we could have, and maybe the museum would want to sponsor, a night where we all try to imitate you. <gasps> I love that idea. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that for your 40th birthday in two years. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> the pimp that, chalice. <laughs> yeah. And so let's talk about your pimp chalice here. Oh, yes. Uh, this is the best show I've ever been on because I've been supplied with some amazing wine and I don't do anything without my pimp chalice. So <laughs> you got your pimp is. chalice. I got it. It's yeah. looking pretty, really, that's, that's one of the better drone box uh, um, props. Straight from the dronebox.com prop shop. Beautiful. So, um, well, we are here to talk about a gem of Southern California architecture and art, uh, the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster, California. We're looking at it uh, right behind you. Look, looky right. there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so, uh, so tell us, uh, now that this is an exterior shot, what are we looking at? Um, that is the front of the museum on Lancaster Boulevard. Okay. And we opened in May of 2012. Um, that front window you see there is a community engagement project that we did during um, the Martin Luther King Day of Engagement, which we do every year in January, um, where we engage the community and in an art project and talk about how we would better our community. This one, this particular one is the MLK quilt and it uh, dealt with young people um, working in their neighborhoods and what, what their dream would be to make their neighborhood better. Okay, and uh, I would assume making uh, land, the neighborhood of Lancaster better could start by building an amazing museum. Who is the architect? Yeah, we're, you know, we're super lucky because we had this amazing uh, public-private partnership between the city of Lancaster and Insight Development. And um, Insight uh, runs a lot of uh, low income and uh, affordable housing in Lancaster and the Antelope Valley, a, a lot of it. And we, in addition to um, bettering the museum, with the museum on the boulevard, bettering that, you know, the real estate values there and not a gentrification situation, but actually um, making a quality of life better for those people who live in the downtown. They engage young, young people and seniors uh, in their um, low income and affordable housing and those people, those people participate in the museum and they have a place to go. We service over a half a million people in the Antelope Valley. There isn't another uh, organization that does what we do out there in Los Angeles County. Now, Antelope Valley is still part of LA County, right? It is. You're yes. still part of LA we County. We are definitely part of LA County. You have yes. to. You have to. You, you have to come down. Who? You have to come down and beg the board of supervisors, or do no, they have to come? No, actually, up? I want to say you know we've been very fortunate that um, our our supervisor has been Michael Antonovich, and he has been very supportive of the museum. Uh, we've won we've won several several awards through the supervisor's office. Um, the LA County Arts Commission, we've partnered with them multiple times. We've done a really great project two years ago uh, called uh, Art Outpost um, Antelope Valley, and that worked in the communities of Sun Village and uh, Little Rock. And we were able to, through the arts, engage the community with people who, are, who don't identify themselves as creative um, with helping to build uh, policy for the county of Los Angeles. So, so it's a really great project. So we're looking here at wow, this is the the, oh, the, the main, big dramatic right. drop off of uh, yeah, that's in, in the main the, gallery. Uh, wow, and in, so uh, uh, what what sh this is? Can this, you tell me about the art that we're looking at? In sure, there? this is a show that we had two years ago uh, uh, by Eric Johnson. It's called Legacy, and he has been working in resin and new materials for uh, about forty years. Well, wait, um, wait, wait. If you're working in a new material 40 years ago, is it is? Excuse me. Is it an old? Is it an old material yet? I don't think for California it is, and especially um, in in the rest of the world, plastics and resin, they haven't quite made it everywhere else. We're still we we are still the the pioneers of those materials in California, especially in the light and space uh, genre and the artists who work in those in, in with the, that medium, um, plastics, resins. And I, I, I still think, I still consider it a new, new media. And you, and you curated the show? I did. You yes. curated the Eric Johnson show? What I was did. that, what was yeah. that like? Um, we that, had to work, you had to work with Eric Johnson. Yeah, right? Eric is actually a really great guy. Um, he is, he's, I think one of the things that I appreciate most about him is that he has worked with the community for so long and all, and, and been such a, an incredible mentor to young people coming up in the system in the, in the last maybe, uh, 20 years with these materials that they wouldn't have learned how to use them had Eric Johnson not been on the scene. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of new material, you know, Peter Alexander and, and Dwayne Valentine and, and those guys I think were very studio heavy and they pioneered um, how we look at that material, but they weren't really in, they weren't engaging the community, um, other arts, younger artists and uh, community members who maybe wouldn't have ever gone to those materials. Ah. So I think uh, you have to, you know, tip your hat to Eric Johnson for, for being able to go there. And Eric always has his hat on to, to tip, Absolutely, to tip yeah. right back, so right? So he does, yeah. So, so um, one, of the, one of the, you know, the fine art program of the Museum of Art History is, you know, unparalleled. Do you have a lot of survey shows? Uh, do you look at, look like these mid-career artists? We do. And, you know, um, I think one of, and, you know, I, I probably shouldn't talk about this because I feel like maybe it's too much, too close to home, but, 
You know, for me growing up in Los Angeles, MoCA was very important. And MoCA focused on the Los Angeles art making community. And I feel like in the last few years, we've lost that focus of what's actually happening in Los Angeles and who are these artists that make up the landscape of art making in, in Los Angeles. And, if, and certainly MoCA is not looking at that. So um, I feel like the museum in Lancaster has kind of filled that void and we're really interested in looking at those mid-career artists who have had not only um, a great contribution to what they're making themselves, but in the um, art making community, giving back and being good mentors and uh, representing the community and this geographic landscape in a, in a positive way. What is it about, I mean, we are in a desert. I think we were recently reminded of this, we kind of like with this, with the, when the drought came, yes, when the drought course, came up. Right. And um, so there was a lot of, uh, almost a political angle taken about the drought. Um, what, uh, you know, the, the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster has a really specific uh, kind of a relationship to that high desert community, We right? do, and, and it's and not the, just... The region and the, right, and the it's geography. Not, it's not just that, it's um, our city, the city of Lancaster is totally dedicated to um, being off the grid, so to speak, and using renewable energy by 2020. I mean, that's very close. We're four years away from that, well, three years away from that now, next month. Um, we will be completely on renewable energy in, in Lancaster. Now there's ample sunlight out there and right, wind. There's course. a lot of wind. A lot of wind. Yeah, yes. we didn't realize wind was a commodity. Right. Once wind was a commodity, Lancaster became a leader in, in yes. that. There's a lot of wind. But reducing the carbon footprint and being able to look at, you know, what are our resources and how do we use them um, in a respectful way and in an effective way um, there are a lot of art makers in Southern California. Again, we're going back to this kind of Southern California um, geographic region and all those issues that pop up with that. Um, so we do have a connection to those artists who are working with, say, water like Song Khalsa um, and others who, um, uh, let's see, Kim Stringfellow, who's doing a, a, a very large project called the Mojave Project, which addresses both um, social issues and our history and our agriculture uses our agriculture use and our resources use in the, in the Mojave Desert, which the Antelope Valley is part of. And yet, it's still really interesting art. It's I mean, very it, interesting. The, the, yeah. the, the first yeah. and foremost thing, it has to be a compelling yes. object. Yeah. What's going on in this picture? This looks like a wild time at the museum. Oh shoot! Oh my gosh! Wow, that's kind of embarrassing. Um, no, no, I picked it because you look so cool. <laughs> oh, my boobs are hanging out. Well, you know, um, this <laughs> like I said, is... I picked it because you look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> this picture is from our uh, annual gala. Um, okay. We have every October, we have a masked gala. This particular year was, um, uh, oh shoot, what was the theme? Now I'm- Well, you have a different oh, theme each year. We have a different theme each year. Um, we dress up in costumes. I take it to the next level pretty much every year. So um, when we, steampunk was our, was our theme that ah, year. Ah, okay, and, look uh, a little steampunk there. Yeah, we had, this is a stilt walker who was part of the, um, part of the party that ah, night. Oh, okay, I, And okay. we raised a lot of money for the museum. And you know, people, they, they, like to, they like to give, but it's even more fun to give when you're in a costume. <laughs> now, do they? Is you find it easier to get a little more money out of the donors absolutely, that way? Like, absolutely. you know, you you look like a clown, so you may as well yeah. throw on no, a couple I, extra hundred. No, I think hundred. people like to dress up and be somebody else, and it's a lot easier to write a bigger check when you when you're somebody, somebody else. else. Yeah. yeah, and yet the bank still treats it like it's your account. That's right. <laughs> yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so um, and and then this is every October. Every October, raising yes. money, but yes. a lot of your job is raising money. Then, it is right? yes. Um, raising money, writing policy, uh, working with higher institutions. Um, I even host a, personally host for the museum, a, um, an artist in residency program. Oh, this is on the roof. You can oh, wow. see our, our beautiful uh, nice, sunset. A nice sunset there. From the view of our rooftop. Yeah, yeah. and um, each year we have two artists in residence and I host them in my home in Lancaster and then they have studio time and they can work in the studio at their leisure, um, and then we conclude the end of the residency with an exhibition. I feel so, like I feel like it's the end of the day now. The sun's going down. It is down. the end of the day. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, and yet um, uh, a little removed from 
culturally and, and geographically from the, the big city? What, what is the population For sure. There? Uh, for the whole Antelope Valley, it's close to a half a million. Ooh, for the wow. city of Lancaster, it's about 160,000. The city oh, okay. of Palmdale, which, which is next to us, is also about 160,000. Is there a big rivalry? There is a very big rivalry. They call it the, um, the Cactus Curtain which oh. I've never understood since okay. I've been there, but of course I didn't grow up there and I'm a newcomer. I've only been there five years. Um, and frankly, I don't see why the rivalry, because it, I think if we worked together, there would be wait, so when you, much more When you built the museum, did, did Palmdale like build like a, their own uh, we're going to have a classical museum if you're going to be showing contemporary no, they, they didn't, didn't do, do that they no? didn't do that but did they, they do, do a wax museum they do that in programming we've oh, really? noticed that as we um, as press you know shows what Lancaster is doing um, shortly thereafter Palmdale will be doing something uh oh awesome. and to me I think that's fantastic I think if we can give everyone in that Antelope Valley an opportunity, and if that's the inspiration for Palmdale to go there then I'm okay. all for it yeah. great Great. All right. I'm, I'm not going to take sides in the Lancaster Palmdale <laughs> debacle, I, I, but if I get a mean, nasty letter from the Palmdale Museum manager, uh, then no. I'll, I'll have to decide then <laughs> hey, if their art program is, is worth it. Art, huh? is, art is Switzerland. Art is Switzerland? Explain yeah, that. Well, we don't, you know, it's, we don't recognize, we're not, we shouldn't be recognizing in, uh, you know, race and religion and sexual orientation and gender, it should be open to everyone. There shouldn't be a discrimination oh, against I, that. I, so I, I feel like, you know, if something happens in Palmdale and maybe Lancaster might have been the inspiration for that, then good. That's great. So what are we looking at here? This is just a good shot of the museum, right? This is, this oh, is, uh, I, what are we? Oh, oh we are looking at the second that's, floor. That's from downstairs looking up. Yes, from the, that is the second floor overlooking the main gallery. You know, now the main reason people don't go to museums is they don't want people looking down on them. Right. And, and here you are, you've actually provided oh, yeah. the chance, well, but you, you provide the chance for people to go up there and look down on, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an elitist, I'm up here. We have yeah. a, the beautiful, the space is beautifully designed. And I think if any of you have ever been to uh, MoMA in New York, there are lots of little places where there are openings and you know windows and uh, you're looking down onto a gallery. I think on the main gallery um, at, S at MoMA in New York, you, you have the opportunity to also look down. I think there are a number of galleries where you can look through the glass and this museum we- I think, I think they actually copied you. Right, right, they did, they copied us. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to be a little, little, little get oh, a zinger in I there. I see my foot right here, and I'm, I'm. That's a, that's out to my husband right now, who has a foot fetish. So. Oh yikes! Okay, well, well, I didn't wear colored socks today. Wait, now, Elisa, <laughs> let's see your socks. I always hide my feet. Oh yeah, you got gray socks on. You kind of, you kind of, you know, you're kind of. I'm flash dance. You got, yeah, you got the, the yes, orange, the, like or, the orange yeah. tights. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, you talk. Sorry, about I just brought that. So now, uh, what, what? Now we are live. So before we get to. Uh, uh, <laughs> So, so when, uh, when did you get the job? Um, I started working for the city of Lancaster um, in 2011 through uh, Insight Development. I came on board with the um, developer who was building the museum. Um, and after my first year, you know, the, the fun my function was purely get the museum built, uh, get it programmed, get it open, which we did. And once that happened, the city of Lancaster asked me to stay, and which I was happy to do because now at this point it was my baby and I feel very connected to it. So you went from the private to the public. Definitely. Is there a difference, private sector, public sector? Yeah, there's a lot more money in private. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, wait, <laughs> you're going backwards. Wait, so, 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 I mean, is there, you know, they always say, oh, the, you're a government employee now, you know? It's well, easy I, street from there. I'm an actual contractor, oh, and okay. uh, so I, 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 this is my business as a consultant, but I feel there's something valuable about being able to serve a community and, and quality of life. So for me, that was like much more important than uh, you know, getting a gigantic paycheck. And I'm at an age now where, you know, those things are important. Those things are giving back to your community, making sure that you make opportunity for other artists. Oops, I just put my hand all over my microphone. Smack! Yeah, sorry about that, guys. The whole audience smack! <laughs> sorry. All right. No, I, that, that's important. The, the give back is important. And, um, 
obviously the Antelope Valley has a need for resources and has a need for opportunity and I'm, I'm now, going is, to do it. Is there any tension with you uh, not showing exclusively Antelope Valley artists and bringing in, I mean, you're showing a great array of Southern California artists. Right. Is there any tension in the job? Where... A, yeah, there is a little bit of a tension. I think when I first started, I always a joke about the first meeting I had with the community was uh, pitchforks and torches. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I really, I, my first meeting, introducing myself to everyone and talking about, you know, what are the needs of the museum? What do we really want to do? What would you like to do? Um, it, it was kind of scary. But after, you know, the first six months and when people got to know me and understood that I'm there for making opportunity, um, I'm there for best representing Southern California, whether that means it's uh, an Antelope Valley artist or, you know, a, a, a Ventura artist or a San Bernardino County artist. We're, we're all part of this bigger landscape. And if we can't um, show all of that, then we're not, we're not telling our complete story. We're telling an incomplete story. So I think over time now, I've been there five years. I think uh, most people, uh, most creatives in the Antelope Valley have seen that they've had opportunity, definitely more opportunity since I've been there. And, um, and we don't have that tension anymore. No, really? Yeah. So, the, so, the, so the, the, they, they've acclimated to you, you've acclimated to them? Yes, which is... and you know, we've, we've brought opportunity. The Los Angeles County Arts Commission, which was not really um, at all involved with Antelope Valley previously, is now very involved ah, and, okay. I mean, to the point that we're writing policy now for the county based on those social practice artists that have come up and worked what, in the community. Tell us about social practice in the institution. I'm a little, I'm still kind of on one of these like social practice, you know, put up or shut up, but uh, uh, what, what is social practice art relative to uh, 2000, well we're taping this, it's December of 2016, what is social, how do you as an institution see social practice art? Um, and that's a super good question because a lot of people don't even know what social practice is. Uh -huh. and, um, I, and, and a lot of people are really upset at what it is. So let's... Of uh, course, <laughs> right. Okay, so um, social practice for the pr particular project that we worked on was engaging community members who are non-creatives in isolated regions of uh, non or unincorporated sections of Los Angeles County. We worked in, uh, in partnership with Suzanne Lacey who is pretty much the mother of social practice in California and worldwide. Um, graduate students from the uh, Otis um, College of Design. And we, talk, we went into the community and worked with people who wouldn't necessarily find art as their way of telling their story. And we helped them to do that. So through uh, multiple workshops and multiple engagements, um, they, they were able to tell their story in a unique way through creative art. And then we, um, we, show, we had an exhibition of the graduate students' work at our second location, which is the Cedar Center for the Arts. And, uh, and then in the data that was collected from that went directly to the County of Los Angeles to uh, help with planning and future development in those two unincorporated cities. So, so, so what is social practice, uh, I guess, in an institution, like there's no, is there, how do you collect the art? Or do okay, you collect so, the art? Well, it's not so much the collection of like a physical art making thing, it's, a, it's engaging community into telling their own story through something that's creative. So maybe it might be through growing food or, if it's in a community that, that might have a history of food and then the water, the water disappeared and now they're trying to continue in their his, historic function without that water, how do they do that? Or in the case of um, Sun Village, which was uh, uh, a black America, basically, black Americans were, were forced to live in a certain community even though they were educated, even though they were part of the aerospace industry, they were forced to live in a certain neighborhood. Now that obviously, even as recent as the 1980s, was still happening in, in Antelope Valley. Ooh, so wow. those, yeah, that's kind of surprising. I mean, we think we live in California and we're so progressive. Oh yeah. I mean, this uh -uh. is part of Los Angeles County. It's still, uh -huh. it was yeah. happening still in the 1980s. Wow. And to have those folks in the, those communities be able to talk about what they do through a creative process, and then have that data collected and show, you know, well maybe we need some, you know, a supermarket on this corner, or maybe we don't need a bus stop in that place, or maybe we do need a park here. 
the county could better organize their planning um, based on those needs, based uh, what was um, uh, discussed through a creative process with community members. Not just going door to door and saying, hey, what do you want? Do you think that the social practice has, it? to me, it mimics the bureaucratic process. And I believe that it, it will get a, it, I believe that there is inevitably a privileging of social practice by funding organizations because they so recognize the bureaucracy inherent in there. They like it. They don't, wait, wait, we're just gonna buy a painting for the museum when we can really go to a lot of meetings about, we can go to a lot of meetings about this artist and we, that's what we do for a living, we go to meetings, so do you? I, I'm with you. I do not, first of all, do not like waste. So if, if it's a, you know, buying a painting versus, you know, going to a bunch of meetings, if those meetings are not gonna benefit the community, there's no point. Okay. So I would much rather spend the money on buying a painting for the museum's collection that mm -hmm. will represent the community in perpetuity, right? Or at least until it's Dia's session. Okay. On the flip side of that, going to a bunch of meetings and talking about what's happening and then nothing ever happens, uh -huh. It's not productive. Not at all. That's not my thing at all. But and, it's you know, productive for the people who, who right, attend but this the is, meeting. This is, it's hard, especially for Los Angeles, because we are not, this social practice does not play a part in the, big, in the greater um, economic indus art industry. We are not, you know, you, can't, you don't have a physical thing to go to auction with. You know, unless you're, there, there's, this isn't a commercially viable product of but, uh, but, the creative and yet, community. And yet, there may not be commerce involved in it, but there sure is a lot, there sure is an economy that there, has risen up around social practice with, 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 uh, with right. you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of money in social practice uh, pretending that there's nothing for sale. I think, and most people who know me or have heard me speak, and you know you've heard me say this over and over again, Art definitely is the best mechanism for change. And, and I know a lot of people will be surprised that don't know me when I say, you know what, if wrestling was the best mechanism for change, that's what I would be doing. Really? I, I, who, who in the art world could you take ooh, in a wrestling match? Um, somebody famous? Or no hot, no hot oil, re oh, just straight hot, wrestling. Hot no, 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 just straight, straight wrestling. wrestling. Straight wrestling. Um, who do you, who, like, okay, you versus Marina Abramovich. Oh, I could totally take you her. You totally take her, okay. Not even, not okay. even a, not even, I could totally okay, take her. Okay, you versus uh, Gisela Colon. I could take Gisela Colon. Really? But I have to say, Gisela has a, uh, she's a creative in a way that I'm not. Oh, yeah? I, I as, as opposed to Maria, who, her work is based on engagement. Engagement and the institution. Right. Okay. That I could totally like step all over. Okay. But I, I, I'm not a maker. Well, I meant physically wrestling. Oh, oh well, I'm meant <laughs> physically wrestling. Uh, physically, yeah, of course I could take Gisella. Look at me. Whoa, like, okay. I love Gisella, but look at physically, really. I'm like twice okay. her size. So, okay. I mean, purely based on like size okay. alone. Okay, okay, well, She's well. a maker and what she does, I don't do. So, I mean, when we talk about it in terms of the art making, like, no curator is a maker. I mean, most curators shouldn't be makers. Do you, but don't you see uh, the curating as kind of an artistic process? I think it is. is it your, do you have a frustrated it's inner It's definitely, artist? yeah, I'm a frustrated artist, inner artist. No, it's, uh, I'm trained as a, as a photographer. I did installation the majority of the late 80s and early 90s. Um, I, I where, love, did you, where did you go to school? I did one year at Woodbury University in, in Los Burbank. Angeles. Yeah, right. Well, well it was downtown. Oh, it at was the downtown. Time. It was part of oh, Otis okay. at oh, that okay. time. And then I uh, finished. I went to business school after that. Oh, I really? had kind of like a crazy young life. I was kind of a wild person. So no, <laughs> you're so you're so serious. I just thought you've always been just oh, this this grand professional. <laughs> It's a thing um, of legend. No, I was, a, I was a wild young person, and I went to business school in Georgia, and then after that I came back and I was married and had a baby and decided to go back to school, and that's when I went into photography um, and, and at Chafee College. They had a beautiful program there. They still have a great program. Oh, wow, Chafee. Chafee College, yes. And I uh, got a certificate there in photography and was working, doing um, kind of 
non-traditional, like gum bichromates and uh, cibachrome at the time. In that was big in the 80s, right. cibachrome. Well, yes. You just swore, it was like, it was bigger than Duran Duran. It was bigger but, than Duran Duran. But now, Duran. what happened to yeah. cibachrome? No, I think, I mean, we're, we're digital now. And that, that's when I fell out of the whole thing. I, was, told, I told people, don't buy stock right? in cibachrome. It's going to collapse. I, I did not actually, but okay. Right. So, so, um, so, and then, but you just, I mean, everybody I talked to who is a, a big time museum curator, big time curator, they didn't go through these curating programs. Do you think that those no, kind of, those kind of like c condense people and they, they, I, they don't really yeah. live well, and see the world? You, your curating comes from an inner ability to organize things. Oh. And synthesize. Much like an artist would would compose a painting. Of course. You're so, just organizing a show. You know, I think that um, you come up with a thesis, you think about that thesis, you think about work um, both visually and conceptually that support that thesis. And, and that's how, you know, when you start curating those things together. Obviously, I have a long history in Los Angeles, so I understand personalities. So when curating a show, lots of times those personalities aren't good for a group situation, so those people don't get curated in. But for the most part, it's, it's mostly based on, you know, how do we visually and conceptually support a thesis? Visually and conceptually? Yes. Without dealing with the personality of the right. artist? Right. Once in a while, though. Once in a while, you have those moments. Here's somebody yeah. just ruining yeah. their own career. Just Oh, that happens a lot. It ha happens more than, we, more than one might imagine. Yeah. Oh, here's a beautiful nighttime yeah, sunset. So, and so this, this is, is there's Moa. There's Moa. And on the rooftop there, um, you can kind of see it as our glass room, which is called the Lantern Room. Um, originally, the museum was designed as a, Chinese, as a Japanese lantern. So you see it, um, it's lit on the bottom, and then it has like this kind of dark band around it, and then it's lit on the top. Oh. That top room is our lantern room. It's all glass. It has a 360 degree view of the entire Antelope Valley. So you can go from the San Bernardinos through the uh, San Fernando, San Gabriels to the Tehachapi's all the way around. When um, it has a beautiful view, when the last shuttle was flown over, because we are in aerospace land, um, we, we had a huge media crowd up there on the roof to take photographs and the shuttle was, you know, we're, we're so high up, we're the tallest building in downtown Lancaster. Um, they buzzed the museum and we got to take all these fantastic pictures of the shuttle. It was amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic building. Is being near Edward, you're near Edwards, Edwards Air Force Base, yes, right? Yeah. Um, now, uh, I was involved with uh, representing an artist, Tim Ude, who, um, he retyped as a performance the entire book, The Right Stuff, most of which takes place at Edwards Air Force Base where the, the, the jet test pilots right. became the first astronauts. Yes. Do you ever have any interaction with any of these tough guys? We do, as, oh, yeah? as a matter of fact. Um, I'm pretty fortunate that I get to work with those people at NASA and those people at Edwards Air Force Base, and they have great collections of both art, of both art and historical documents, and of course, our museum also deals with uh, history. Not not just art. Now, you have museum right. of art and history. There's a, there's a lot of history there, right? right. So right. you have you have historical documents. Yes, we have dating back to the old west. And in even earlier than that, we have uh, ten thousand over ten thousand artifacts that go from you know early Indian points and uh, native ephemera to all the way up to you know current uh, contemporary art. Really? Yeah. So there's, you know, grinding stones and native points and beadwork and, you know, uh, whatever you can. I think one of our oldest pieces in our collection is 5,000 years old. So 5,000 yeah. years old. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's it's pretty great. It's not a Rothko. It's not a Rothko. <laughs> what, what, well, what what is what would you say is the most? Well, you probably have to do the insurance paperwork so you would know what is the most valuable um, possession in the collection, besides um, yourself, of course. <laughs> I think, uh, geez, out of 10,000 artifacts, I mean, valuable in, the, in terms of... Well, like, uh, like, like, for example, I mean, like, if, you, if, like, what's if we were going to sell it tomorrow on, yeah. at auction, we've had multiple offers to purchase a knife that we own in the collection that it are, it's, I, I think it's 2,000 years old. Um, it is made out of... Obs 
obsidian. Obsidian? Yes. And obs you have an obsidian knife. Yes. And, and, it's, and it's not OJ's. No. Okay. It's not okay. OJ's. Just making sure. <laughs> and it's and it is decorated in beadwork and seeds, and we've had multiple and seeds and seeds. You're not worried about it, this knife sprouting. No. No. It's not it's the, so uh, old, and it's not it a Ginsu is, knife. It's no. a it's it is, a chia knife. <laughs> it is beautiful, okay. and it we've had multiple offers to sell this piece um, for a lot of money. For a lot, not of money. four ninety nine on eBay. No. Buy it now. No, okay, no this no. is a very valuable, and it represents the community that came from. And don't ask me what it is because that's not my forte. Uh, but what, my, you know, but we. What is the most valuable artwork? The most valuable in your permanent collection. Work in our permanent collection. Mm, uh, that's a good question. Um, well, what's your favorite? Oh, my favorite? Oh, that's horrible. Oh, because you have too many to I pick from. I have too many favorites. Ah, I have too many. My I mom do had seven kids, and I asked exactly. her, who's your favorite? She always says me. So we, exactly. no, okay, no, no, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, um, I, do, I do have a very special connection recently to an Andrew Schultz painting that we, per, that we uh, were gifted from the Mark and Hillary Moore Family Trust. Um, that I love. Uh, also, um, recently we had a, an Allison Sholnick painting that was gifted from a collector. Wow. That I am totally in love with and can't wait to put on the wall for the community to see. Um, I love our relationships with some of the artists that we've worked with, uh, Rebecca Campbell being one of them. Uh, Gary Lang, Ruth Pastine. These are artists who've been very generous to the museum. You you have worked privately in the art world too as at AC Projects. Yes. Yeah. And um, and you worked a lot with uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, California artists, uh, uh, Carl Benjamin. Oh, Carl. Carl to me. Um, I mean, he basically walked me down the aisle when Alex and I got married. He's uh, part of our family. It was um, very sad to lose Carl. Um, shoot, I'm going to start crying. Uh, a really great guy, great painter. Great, amazing painter. Um, I think young people now in, t in this day should look back, and it's unfortunate that he can't talk to them, but I think all of those painters and all those young artists from Claremont who got to interact with Carl um, took away, there's a special part of being um, a creative, and that your, your life comes out in what you do. And, and what you do is really important. So to isolate yourself to only making art is wrong. And if you look at those, you know, what were they called? The, um, what did they call them at LACMA when they had the show back in the 60s? Um, the gang? The, class, the classicist. What, did, what was it called? The shit, I can't even I, remember. I'm not an art historian. I'm anyway, just a TV I, I'm, dude. Uh, me neither. Anyway. They, um, you know, it was like John McLaughlin and... and uh, You're talking about artists who are basically hermits in their studio, basically, right. relative and, to Carl Benjamin being right. a little Carl more Right, Carl Benjamin was very family-oriented yeah. and very community-oriented. And um, his, his idea of making work was that your day that you experienced reflected in the work that you made and that you brought that with you to the studio. You didn't have a life with your family and, or whatever you were doing outside and then you went into the studio and it was like a vacuum. That the best work that was made re best reflected what was happening in your day and how you spent that time. So I respect that and I, I think some of the best artists that I've known, especially, especially in Los Angeles, also that reflects in their in their philosophy in their studio practice. Now, now uh, you're you're married to a great painter, Alex Kallenberg. I'm married to a great painter. And 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 is he influenced at all by by Carl Benjamin? He is. Carl was one of his mentors. Oh really? Okay. And, yeah. And okay. uh, when Alex was at uh, Claremont uh, Graduate School, um, Carl he worked very closely with Carl. And I think, you know, Alex had an illustration degree from Art Center, and that was ah. very commercially driven. Um, he's, he's, he can draft like nobody's business. I mean, if you want to see someone, you know, render in a, a, a realistic drawing, he, he's the guy for the job. But it didn't, it didn't appeal to him in a creative way and that there wasn't um, a challenge in that. It was like, okay, how easy is that? Like you're, you know, you're looking at that light and you're drawing it. He, it wasn't for him. Not for him. He wanted to do something more conceptual. And so he went to graduate school. He became, you know, he started painting in abstraction. Um, and his work is very conceptual and it's very complex. Um, definitely non-objective, which is kind of odd that that's how he was traditionally trained. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, Carl 
talk to him about, you know, yes, you're making this non-objective work, but how does your daily life influence what you do in that image? Mm -hmm. Like, what's happening there? So tell us what's, oh wait, I wanna, I wanna get a shot of what we're looking at here. Oh, this yeah. was one of yeah. your most fun shows. This was a great show. This was a great show, like last summer, right? Yes. Tell uh, us about it. This was uh, in summer of 2015. It was called Play, Create, Collect. And it, we were ac actually the first museum show to ever uh, curate an ex exhibition highlighting 25 years and then some on the collector toy industry. So. Um, all of the artists who make collector toys and work in vinyl and work in plastics, um, like, you know, artists like Mark Ryden, um, Dave that was, Pressler. We were, we were just looking at a Tim Biscup there, We right? were, were looking at a Tim Biscup, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we showed that kind of, we did a, an exhibition that showed the history of how those, art, those fine artists kind of crossed over into that collector base and also how the collector artists crossed over into fine arts. So it was a, it, we focused on the West Coast. We didn't, we didn't show New York. We didn't show anywhere else internationally. We just focused it's on It's not all Angeles. rigorous abstraction. It's There's, not we all, We have no. fun stuff going we on at MoMA. We do have Mola. fun stuff going at MoMA. But now, was this a popular show with the, with the general public? This was a very popular show. Um, it also connected us with a lot of artists who do um, murals. Ah. And so in the summer of 2016, a lot of those artists uh, that work with um, a group called Pow Wow Hawaii, uh, Powell Worldwide, they, um, they offered to do some murals in downtown Lancaster, which we were thrilled to be uh, one of the only um, California besides Long Beach, um, the only communities that have, have invited Pow Wow to participate. So we have some really, really fantastic, there's 12 new murals in the downtown. Um, several of those came from artists that directly came from our Play Create Collect. And, uh well received by the community? Well received, yes. No protests? No protests. No controversy? No. Has there, you've avoided controversy at, at no, MoMA? No, that, that, we've had controversy. You've had, you've yeah, had some controversy. Yeah, we, we've had some stuff. controversy. My phone is blowing up right now. I can hear really? it, like feel it behind me buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. You, you, you left your vibrator at home, but you right? didn't need to worry. I know, right? Just, it's yeah. just buzzing. <laughs> So, um, so basically, everybody's watching. Are they saying mention me? I, mention I don't me? know what. What's, are they oh yeah, they're all like mention talk me. about my work. Talk about oh no. talk about oh, me. Oh, wow, you look now. awesome. What's yeah. going on in this picture? It seems like there's a big crowd of people to bug. Oh, it's it's okay. Uh, so I think you were on this panel. I, I'm, I, I picked one that I was hidden by oh, the way. Oh yes. okay. Yes. Well, well, you shouldn't because yeah. you well, were great. But there's enough of me on the damn show. It's, That's right. <laughs> okay, so there's so you 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 have panel discussions here, and this was your this was a very this was probably my favorite show. Great I've seen show. it, Moa, yeah. uh, as far as a big group show. What, what was this show? This show, Hearsay, was uh, curated um, by Wendy Sherman. Wendy Sherman? Yeah. The we, Wendy, we Wendy Sherman? Sherman. Okay. And uh, she did this as her graduate thesis for Cal State Fullerton. Um, I saw the show at Fullerton. I loved it so much. And I thought, okay, these are all California artists that I love. And in no other context would I ever be able to show these artists. So. I, I liked the way it was curated. I loved the thesis. Um, I think the Fullerton show was a little bit more creative in its um, presentation. The, um, we're a little bit limited in our main gallery as far as, you know, we've got four big walls and there's not, we, we don't really deviate from that much in the main gallery, but. And, and, and well, I mean, it's just, because it, MOA really is one of the stunning architecture spaces for seeing art. It's, it, it is, there's a, you gasp when you first enter it. And then when you go upstairs and look down, you gasp again. I mean, it's a two gasper. It's a two okay? gasper. <laughs> and so, so the, but I, what I liked about the Hearsay show was, was um, you had this great diversity of artists, but they were all working on Hearsay, which is rumors, gossip, right. legends, right. the unproven. Right, yes. Sometimes the unprovable. Right, yes. Yeah, so that, and that, that was a fun, and, and it had, it had a, just a, a weird variety of people. It was very fun, and Wendy's, Wendy's a for, gonna be a force in the art world, she's, regardless. She's a, she's a great woman, and I love her aesthetic, and I love the way that she's able to put artists together, and people trust her, and that's, that's half the... I trust Wendy Sherman with my life. Me too. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, okay. So, so um, let's, let's talk about... Oh, we're okay. on the rooftop. Oh, this is, this is a nice view. Oh, can we see the art? Because this, is, this okay. is Shana, right? This is Shauna Mabari. Shauna Mabari. Yes, and she um, is, uh, I would say, probably in the youngest generation of art and space, uh, light and space artists. And this particular 
um, installation is on the rooftop of the museum, and these are her, um, her petals. Uh, they are made out of plastics and reflective mirrored surfaces. Um, they definitely can withstand the weather. They were up there during snow, rain, the wind, uh, the heat. Wait, you guys get snow? We get snow. You we get do. snow? We do get snow. Not enough to make a snowman. Not enough to make a snowman. And not enough to damage, because it's, it's, it's not damageable, right? The, the, the Shauna's art. No, and, and that's why I mentioned that. Um, the way these are made um, are uh, in alignment with kind of the light and space California aesthetic of, you know, we have different light here. Obviously, we're producing different things. These reflect the architecture that, they're, they, that, that they are in and surround. Um, they add color and they add another shape and dimension to the space that's there. Um, they're beautiful works, and I just bought one recently for my son for Christmas. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of her work because I think that she's taking it to the next level. And these are, there's a lot, there's a big generation of younger artists. I think Gisela Colon is also one of those artists that has taken that um, light and space to the next level and the next generation. You know, light and space, uh, you know, historically, kind of like a, a, a California response to minimalism, maybe even to abstract expressionism. Um, you know, people think things start to get played out, and then all of a sudden there's this complete fresh take. And especially, you know, the first generation was pretty much, it, it was like a lot of sausage on that pizza. Right. There was yeah. what we're talking about. You yeah. know, now there's a lot of women. They're bringing a completely new perspective For to sure. that. For sure, yeah. And, you know, the materials have changed, too. As much as we say, like, oh, blow-molded plastics, um, like, you know, you would look at, like, maybe a Craig Kaufman back in the day, and then, and now you would look at something that's kind of sim similar, like uh, Gisela Colon's work, it is definitely very different. And you can see her influence as a creative and as a woman in uh, that kind of interpretation of what the work looks like and, and how she would take that to the next level. Totally, totally. Yeah. I want to get a, I want to get a shot. Oh, look, you're oh, on my dear. show here and here. Yay! Wait, you're looking a little uh, kind of professional there with the flag oh, and everything. Look at that. Oh, and you got the city. Is that the city seal? That is the city seal. Okay. Um, every year in May, we have an annual Mother's Day tea. Oh. And another. This is like another. See, so you, you've got you've got the mass ball. You've got you do. You're, yeah. And you're, and you're doing fundraisers, but they're you're but you're no, putting the fun. No, everyone's having a good time. You're putting the yeah. fun in fundraiser. Yes. yes. Everyone's having a okay, good so time. Okay. So this is the Mother's Day tea. This is the annual Mother's Day tea, and uh, we usually sell out months before. Oh really? Everyone it's loves that this popular. event. It's that popular. Wow. Okay. Um, the tickets are forty-five dollars. Matter of fact, we will probably go live on our website in the next month uh, with the uh, information on our tea. This year's theme is made in the Mojave. Okay. Uh, we'll be celebrating uh, Kim Stringfellow's Mojave project. We'll also be celebrating in our main gallery um, landscape paintings uh, specific to the Mojave Desert by Samantha Fields. And, uh, and each year our theme is a little bit different, and so the food is different, and the dress is different, and everybody has a good time. So, so um, you don't have to have it catered? You cook everything there? We, uh, we actually have a couple of city partners that oh, okay. we work with. Last year we worked with the Lemon Leaf and um, our theme was Farm to Table. Oh wow. And so we had everything that we served at that tea uh, came from the Antelope Valley local farmers. They donated and wow. then- Even um, the tea, the tea leaves are from- The tea, that's no. Not, they, don't make, they don't make tea. The tea leaves didn't come from the Antelope okay, Valley, okay. but the food I'm just, did. I, yeah. I, I gotta call you out when I can yeah. call you okay. out. Okay, so, and here's, oh, this is a big party here on the roof. We're on the roof. Okay. We are on the roof, and this was during our powwow um, AV. Uh, so some of these artists are the street artists that um, worked on the 12 murals. Speaking um, of younger generations, yes. I can't relate to these kids anymore. You know, They don't want to put art on a canvas. They want to put it on my wall. Yeah. Private property. No, I, I think it's good. I think that you're, I'm glad that you have an open mind that you want to do that because I, I think that's really important. And when we go back to talking about, you know, arts for young people, it's so great to see young people being able to tell their story. Um, I think for so long we have um, art students who go to graduate school and they're told how that they should make something that looks like art, but they're never instructed on how to make something that has soul and has that comes from it within and um, uh, uh, expressing their own story. And, you know, there's a lot of, this is how you make something that looks like something instead of make something that comes from in here and is unique. How does one make art as opposed to 
things that look like art. Right. There's right. a lot of that. And going I think around. the right. No, it it really is. So. I think that's um, what happens when we f we find the need to um, follow the industry and the auction histories and what happens. Um, in, in it, it starts to replace banking as yes, just a financial. Of course, uh, it has. We're like the last unregulated, you know, investment in the United States and maybe even world in the world. The, the arts are crazy. It's like if you can make something that looks like something, then that might go to auction, and then later on, you know, we'll, you'll follow that artist based on like how well it, how well did it do at auction. But when you look at the work, sometimes you think, hmm, does. Does the concept of this piece and, and the um, physical craft of it matter? I mean, sometimes I feel like, who fucking cares? Wow, um, wow, wow. What are we looking at here? We, oh, this is, oh, perfect example of this. Okay, so we are looking at- Speaking of a p true pure artist. This is a, t this is a true pure artist. Derek Boischer, uh, he is part of our British Invasion exhibit. And he has been making work for over 50 years. Um, he's very important. He was also the mentor for people like Joe Strummer, who was in The Clash, and, and other artists of that nature. He worked very closely with David Bowie. Um, and he's, this isn't just about like you know the music industry. This is about people who were creative and had ideas and how to manifest those ideas and how to make them something physical. And I think Derek Boischer is like one of the, one of the greats. Um, he now lives in Los Angeles. Um, he's part of this British Invasion exhibit that we have at MOA right now, which is celebrating uh, the British influence of- On uh, Southern California. On, they love, they love, on they love the California. weather. They yes. love the weather. And the landscape and, and how they've changed the landscape. I mean, we-, we Oh yeah. Um, look at David Hockney has oh, changed yeah. the landscape dramatically. But you can't smoke indoors anymore, David, sorry. Right. <laughs> Not here. Go back to England. You can smoke there. I don't think you can smoke indoors in England anymore. No, I don't think you can. Well, hey, we could gab all night. I know we could. But we have to show you from oh, the Skechers I'm scared. Seat. I'm afraid. You're scared. Ah. What do we see? Wow, wow, wow. From the Skechers seat to Andy Campagnon. What do we say? Here we go. Is it, it is, is it is it an, is it minimalism? <laughs> <laughs> she got the chair in there too. They look like angel wings. You've made her the angel. I am an angel. She's made you the angel, angel of art. I am an angel. Hey, for my guest Andy Campagnone, straight from the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster, my lovely Skechers seat occupant, internaliza. Myself, I'm your host, Matt Gleason. This has been our 50th episode of Modern Art Blitz. Thanks for watching. We're live at five every Sunday, but next Sunday's Christmas, so, yeah, uh, so yeah. It was a great 2016. I guess this was our season finale. We'll see you all in 2017. Oh. 50 episodes. <laughs> Finally, some noise from the green room. I yeah. can appreciate. <laughs> Woo! Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us.